Hey, Randy from Andon. We're here today at Electra Leaf in Edmond, Oklahoma. We're going to install some 320 pint dehumidifiers in a nice new clean facility. And we're going to do a flower room today to show you the steps of installing a unit properly, um, some tricks of the trade, uh, things the do's, the don'ts, and uh, just make sure that everything is hooked up and running properly so you can get a successful crop and a successful harvest. The first thing we need to do is get this beast and all of its components out of the box. Cut along the dotted line, take the cover off, and see what's inside. So, very important, installation instructions, everything you need to know in there. We simplified that with a quick start guide that gives you all the basic steps that you need to get this out of the box and, and get it going. So, um, we've pretty, pretty clear, pretty easy, but some good information on there. We've got our feet, our hanging brackets that uh, go into the side of the unit. Um, also, it's nice to install them right away so you can use it to lift with. These go into the side of the unit and we can hang the unit off these brackets. The hole in here will accept half, all the way up to half inch threaded rod. Typically we use 3 8 quarter is fine as well, but quarter 3 8 or half inch threaded rod to go in there to support the unit with a couple washers and nuts. Our 320 pint units do need a, a P-trap. The rest of our units from 210 down to our 70 pint do not. They have a positive pressure cabinet. This cabinet is a negative pressure cabinet, so the fan is on the outlet side, so we're drawing air through, sucking air through the cabinet, which also pulls air up the drain line, um, so we have to trap the unit. We include a preformed PVC trap. Uh, works really well. Uh, we also have vinyl tubing that you can do use to make a trap or extend your drain line with. So we'll show both options as we get going here today. Finally, we include the model A77 um, remote control with our dehumidifiers. Typically the dehumidifiers are hung way up at the ceiling and we don't want to take a humidity reading at the ceiling height. We want to get the humidity reading and control the dehumidifiers right down at the canopy. So we include the model A77 so that we can do this. We include thermostat wire and a screwdriver, everything you need to use this control. Okay, we've got the unit and the components unboxed. Now it's time to start the installation. So one thing to consider when deciding where to place the units inside of a room is the airflow. Which way are the fans going? Where is the HVAC ductwork located? We don't want to have the air conditioner blowing cold, dry air into the inlet of the dehumidifier and we don't want to have one dehumidifier blowing hot, dry air out of it right into the inlet of the neck. So keep the dehumidifiers a, um, a fair distance away from each other and make sure your air conditioner is not blowing right into the inlet of a dehumidifier. On the inlet side of the dehumidifier, you'll see the filter and the user interface, the onboard control. We want to make sure that we have access to that to keep that away from the wall far enough so that we can get in there to change the filter and access that control when needed. And then we also want to have access to our electrical panel. The side door comes off to replace any easy components like a, a fuse or a transformer. So we want to make sure that we leave access to that electrical access panel when, when mounting the unit. Most commonly in the industry, we see the units being hung from the ceiling with unistrut and threaded rod. So today we're placing the unit inside the room, we're gonna hang it from the ceiling, but these units can also be placed outside the room and ducted in. Um, if that's ever desired, just let us know and we'll walk you through step by step what is the best practice. Um, they can also be set on the floor. The hanging brackets that come with it also um, accept our foot kit. So if you had to set it on a, a unit on the floor for whatever reason, we do have a foot kit available as well. So we have the unit up and hung from threaded rod right now. Typically, um, the threaded rod would come straight down through the ceiling and to connect right to the unit and have unit strut or something on the top side where we can get a good secure mount to. And this one, they had a lot of uh, things on the roof, on the, on the deck above the room that didn't allow them to come straight down. They had to get around a couple of things that were up there. So they, they came down with threaded rod and put some unit strut there and made a little cage for the unit to hang off of it, which is perfectly fine just a little bit more work in this application. Um, now we're, we got the unit up, we're raising it into spot, we're gonna level it. We wanna make sure that unit is level from all directions so the water drains out properly and works properly. The drain is on the bottom, so it's, it's pretty easy, but we don't want any standing water in that drain pan when the unit is shut off. We want, all the, we want the pan to be able to dry out every time that the unit shuts off and the water to get away. So we'll get that drain pan, or get that leveled up so we get the water out of the drain pan. We are gonna hook up 
our drain trap next. We're gonna show a couple different trap configurations that we can do. We put this little barbed fitting on there that can screw in. We put some Teflon tape or some thread tape on there, screw it in by hand. We don't need to uh, put a wrench on it. You can get it in there just by hand. And then we could put this, this tubing on it and we could take and make a perfectly good trap just like this. We can make a, make a loop in there here to catch. This would fill up halfway with water and this would be an acceptable trap and the water could just drain straight down if that was desired. More commonly, we're going to take this fitting that comes in there, screw it in by hand with some tape on it and use the, the preformed trap that we provided with the unit in there. It makes it a little bit cleaner. Now, depending on the application, we're going to either put a vent on here or not put a vent on it. If it's going into a straight open hole, draining where it's gonna drip, drip, drip in down into a hole um, where the pressure's neutralized, you really don't need a vent. If we're gonna um, dump it into a central draining system um, where a siphon action could, hurt, could occur, the siphoning can cause water to be sucked out of here and then make a dry trap and the unit would start to leak. So um, venting isn't a bad thing to do post um, the, the trap. But So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna put a T on here, we're gonna trap it. After that, we're gonna put this on. We're gonna use a little bit of this black piping and then reattach it back to hard piping. So when the units turn on, they move a little bit, they jerk a little bit. This just gives it a little flexibility to move. It's not necessary necessarily that you have to do it that way, but it isn't a bad practice to have a little bit of tubing on there. Now that we have the drain trap connected to the bottom of the unit, we're going to extend that out all the way across the room down to the main drain inside the room. We want to make sure that that drain line, all those lines are pitched downhill so water is continually running out of there and not standing, standing inside of the drain line stagnant. Then last thing to do before we fire up the unit for the draining system is to prime that trap. That trap has to have water in it to work properly. So that can easily be done just by removing the filter off the front of the unit and pouring water right down the face of the coil. We can access the drain pan right here. You can see how my fingers are stuck down inside the drain pan. Um, so you can pour water down the face of this coil into the pan and let water get into this trap so the trap is primed. The trap needs to have water in it. So it's an easy step to forget, but make sure you trap, uh, prime the trap. There are basically three methods of controlling this unit. The onboard control that comes with it is a perfectly good control to use, but if you're way up above the canopy, like we are gonna be in this location, it's, it's not favorable to have us reading the humidity at the ceiling. So uh, we bring in that external control, our model A77, and hook that on there. And um, if you wanted to use any other company's third-party control on there, that can provide a simple dry contact, it can control the unit as well. The control, once you put the control, any kind of control, the 77 or anything else, it doesn't know that it's there. You have to go into the program and tell it that it has a control attached to it. So I'm gonna show you today how to hook these two together. And once we do hook it together, we have to get into the installer setup menu to tell the unit that this control is attached to it. We've got this in the quick start manual um, as, as well, the wiring diagram, the simple instructions, how to do that the step, uh, setup menu steps that you have to go through. because Just because we wired the control to the user interface, it does not know that it's there. We have to go into the installer setup menu and tell it that it has an external control on it. Um, underneath of this cover here is the wiring terminals. We have a bunch of information on here. The most important thing is 1-800-972-3710. If you have any questions, call us, talk to us. We'll help you get through setting this up properly. These wiring terminals pull off to make it easy to connect the wires to instead of trying to get your fingers in there. So there's a bunch of different terminals for a bunch of different things in here, but we're gonna use this control as a remote. Um, so we're only gonna use this set of terminals. And you can see it says remote, and it says plus, minus, A and B. I've got a terminal block. I've wired it up to go on here. I've got red going to plus, white going to minus, green going to A, and blue going to B. There is no particular order that you have to do that in, but we do got to make sure, we do need to make sure that they match up, that we're going plus to plus, minus to minus, A to A, and B to B. To remove the back of the control from the face, 
you just pull this off of there. And we're gonna wire this control to those terminals. So I am gonna wire this up. I wanna make sure that we get them good and tight in there. The screwdriver wedges in there a little bit, so we wanna make sure that we're getting that tied down good. So I've got, I'm gonna double check, I've got I've got um, R plus, red on plus, C minus, white, C minus, or minus white, green on A, and blue on B. So I'm just gonna try and tug on each one of these wires a little bit individually to make sure that they are in there good and snug and they're not coming out. So, yeah, I'm gonna plug the, the head back onto that base. There are a set of pins right here that line up in these holes, it goes in there. It's gonna flash the firmware information on the front and now it's showing what the relative humidity is in our facility. Um, now here are some steps that we'll follow along with our quick start guide as well. It's right here, tells us what to do. We have the unit plugged in, we have it turned on, we have, it says off on the screen. On the user interface, we wanna make sure that it says off on there um, when we're getting into the installer setup menu and we can touch any button on here to turn on the backlight to wake up the control. If the backlight's not on, it will not, you cannot program it or do anything. So first button push, always any button turns on the light. Light's on now. Now we're gonna hold the mode button down for approximately 15 seconds. And now we're in the installer setup menu. And you can see the very first thing, it asks us if we have a remote, and that's what we just wired up, a remote. And it is wired up and it says disabled. I wanna enable that. So I'm gonna push it till it says enabled. And now I'm gonna push the remote button repeatedly until it said done on the screen. And now it came back to off. Now this is a step that most people miss. It's still off, so we have to turn it on. So we're gonna push the on off button. And now it says remote. And this is now controlling the unit. So we're gonna take a look at this control here. Um, it also has to be turned on. So we're gonna push the on button and now the little word on is displayed. Now, just because it says it's on doesn't mean the dehumidifier should be running yet. So um, on power up on this first uh, setup, it takes three minutes for the unit to, um, before it will start up, we have a three minute time delay to protect our compressor from power outages. So every time power comes on, there's a three minute delay. And afterwards, if the humidity in the room is higher than the set point, so I'm gonna move this down as low as I can get it, because it's pretty dry in here, to 35% relative humidity. It's gonna go back to the room humidity of 40% humidity. So within three minutes, this word on should start flashing, saying that the dehumidifier should be on. Now normally, if the unit is just sitting there off and you would walk up to the control and adjust the set point, it would turn on immediately, but during a power um, cycle, power outage or a power cycle, there's a three minute delay. That's where we're, we're in right now is our three minute delay. If this unit has any problems and it, we get a diagnostic code on the screen, it'll display it here. It'll also display it there. Now you can hear the unit is on. Um, the um, word on is flashing. So we're telling the dehumidifier to be on and it is on. So everything is wired up and working properly. All right, that went really well today. We got everything installed, everything's working properly. I um, hope you learned a few things. As always, give us a call at And in Tech Support if you have any questions during the installation. Don't feel silly calling us, just give us a call. We're there for you. We wanna make sure that everybody gets their units in successfully, installed properly, and have a good, successful harvest.